The Conform Object Blender add-on is for 3D modelers who need to project an object onto another object's surface. In this video, I'll describe how to use the add-on and documentation is also linked in the description. Do not hesitate to get in touch via info at configurate.net if you have any questions or issues. The add-on is installed like a regular add-on in Blender. Go to Edit Preferences, select the Add-ons tab if it isn't already and click the Install button. Select the zip file you downloaded and then click Install Add-on. Then the add-on should appear in the list of other add-ons. Make sure the checkbox is ticked next to it. Here we have a basic object that I'm going to project onto a sphere surface. Note that the object is ideally one that has a straightforward setup. It has geometry that will allow it to deform easily enough and it doesn't have any charred objects or any boolean modifiers that are dependent on other objects. First, move and rotate the object so that it points towards the place on the surface of the sphere you want it to project to. Ideally, the local rotation of the object will have its base directly pointing towards the sphere. To check the object's local rotation, expand the gizmo section in the viewport and under Object Gizmos, select Local from the drop-down box and tick the Move checkbox. Now, when you select and rotate the object using the R key, you will be able to see its local rotation on the blue, green and red XYZ axis that appears at the object's origin. To get the object's base to automatically point directly towards the sphere, with the add-on installed, open the snapping menu at the top of the viewport and select Toggle Surface Snapping. The add-on automatically switches on Blender's snapping options for aligning an object to the surface of another when you move it. With the object selected, press G to move the object onto the surface of the sphere. You'll notice that the XYZ axis of the object is orientated so that the base, or the negative Z direction, is pointing towards the surface. Selecting the Toggle Surface Snapping option again disables the snapping mode. Now click on the object again, which will call the Source object. Press Shift and then click on the Sphere last, which will now call the Target object. Then right click for the Viewport Context menu in Blender and go down to the Conform Object option. Select Conform Object from the submenu. And now the object should be projected onto the surface of the target object. You can also quickly access these options from the top of the viewport by clicking the Conform Object icon. I'll now talk about how the add-on works and some of the challenges you might encounter. Let's expand the parameters panel in the bottom left of the viewport whilst the operation is being performed and take a closer look. First, expand the projection section at the top. By default, the add-on works by automatically creating a hidden grid object that is used to project onto the surface. You can view the grid by clicking the closed eye icon next to the deformation grid section. The add-on works like this. First, the grid is created and placed on the source object surface and aligned towards the target object. Then, the source object has a surface deform modifier added to it and associated with the grid. Then, a shrink wrap modifier is used to project the grid to the target object. Because of the surface deform modifier, when the grid is deformed, the source object is deformed along with it as well. If you expand the deformation grid section, you can change the options of the grid, such as its smoothing parameter, which can help the grid bind more smoothly to complex surfaces. I tend to leave these parameters as they are in most scenarios. Next, we'll talk about how the source object is projected onto the target object. The source object projection mode is set to auto by default. This mode will first try to project using a line from the middle of the source object's base or the negative Z direction to the target object. And if that does not intersect with the target object, 
it will instead project the source object onto the closest point on the target object's surface. In these cases, the source object may not be aligned exactly to the surface you want to project to, or there may be gaps where you wanted the object to be flush. To fix this, whilst performing the conform object operation, expand the object transform section. Adjust the local rotation options to orient the source object towards the target object's surface. You can then make sure the source object is projected onto the surface the way you need it to. There are also times when you don't want the entire object to be deformed. Let's have a closer look at this source object for instance. You'll notice that applying the conform operation to the whole of this object is not ideal as the threads are also distorted and you would not be able to fit a bolt around it. To deal with this, we can adjust the gradient effect setting, which is already turned on by default. We can visualize this effect at work by going to the Viewport Overlays tab, and with the add-on installed, select the Vertex Object Mode Visualization option. This is an extra tool we have included that allows you to visualize vertex groups in object mode, something you cannot normally do in Blender. Now, expand the gradient effect parameters in the conform object panel. The gradient effect automatically sets a vertex group weighting from the base of the source object up to the top, where the weights get less and less towards the top of the object. We can lower the effect of this by changing the end point parameter. This controls where on the object the effect will terminate. By default, it is set to one, or the top of the object. However, by lowering the value, we can also lower where the effect ends. We could also increase the value beyond one if we like. Let's lower this value so the threading is no longer affected. Another thing to talk about is bad deformations you might see and how we might deal with them. Add a basic cube and subdivide it. The add-on always works best on objects with more geometry. When we conform this object to the surface, you'll notice there are some imperfections in the deformation. We can smooth out some of the upper imperfections with the gradient effect, but let's also look at the target object as there may not be enough geometry for the source object to conform to. You can improve this by either increasing the smoothing parameter in the deformation grid section or by increasing the geometry on the target object, perhaps with a subdivision surface modifier. This should help the source object better conform to the surface. There's another hopefully useful feature we've included, and that's how we can blend the normals of the source object with the target object. Here I have a simple pointy object I modelled and I want to put horns on the surface of the target object. Conform the object as per usual and this time enable blend normals. This will automatically transfer the face normals of the target object to the source object creating a more blended effect at render time. Adjusting the separate end point parameter for this feature also affects where on the base object the influence is terminated, much like the gradient effect. If you want to undo the conform object operation, select the source object and right click and select undo conform object. This will remove all relevant modifiers created by the add-on. You might also want to apply the conform operation to the object, which you can do with the option apply conform object. This will apply all the relevant modifiers instead, leaving you with the altered object that you can then edit. If trying to use the conformed object as a boolean cutter on the target object, I would recommend you use the apply conform object or visual geometry to mesh operation first, which will apply the conform modifiers. Otherwise, you'll get Blender into a loop where it is trying to use the object to cut but then the source object itself is trying to deform to the cut shape. Some gotchas. In grid mode, if you edit the base object, the deformation gets disabled. 
This is because the surface deformation modifier loses its binding. You can fix this by performing the conform object operation again, which will replace the surface deformation modifier with a new one. Also, in grid mode, if you copy an object, the copied object will not have the conform applied. This is because the copied object would have been pointing to the old grid object. Just reapply the conform object operation on this copied object and you should be good to go. There are many other features and edge cases to read about in the written documentation linked in the description. And do not hesitate to contact me via info at configurate.net if you have any questions or issues. I look forward to hearing your feedback and I hope you find this add-on useful.